In this video, I'm going to talk about function and derivative notation. The first thing I want to talk about here is function notation and how um, a, a mathematician's use of function notation differs from what you probably saw in high school and often what you would see in a calculus course. So let me just give you an example. Uh, so if we were talking about the function that squares things, in other words, you give the function a number and out comes the square of that number, you would denote that as f of x equal x squared. And the x is a variable that allows us to write down a formula, but there's nothing implicit in the of x that's required. In other words, I could just talk about the function f being a squaring function. And so mathematicians, for example, if they're writing down a theorem, they would write something like this, let f be a continuous function or differentiable something, and then the content of their theorem would come later. But the important point here that I'm trying to um, point out is that you wouldn't see them write something like f of x as the notation for the function because you don't need the x in there if there's no formula defining that function. Okay, so this matters um, when we start talking about derivative notation in a few cases. So let me write that down here. Let's move on to derivative notation. And before I start, I just want to point out a nice resource on this, which is this page here. Uh, it's a Wikipedia page all about uh, the notation for differentiation. And what you can see here is they start off with Leibniz's notation, which maybe some of you have seen, but that's not the most common one seen in a first calculus course. And then there's uh, what's referred to here as Lagrange's notation, which I've always referred to this as Newton's notation, but there is a subtle difference here. Lagrange used primes to no, no, denote uh, derivatives. And if we scroll down to see Newton's notation, which is also not all that common in a first year calculus course, it, uh, ooh, where'd it go? Did I pass right by it? There it is, Newton's notation. It, um, it replaces the primes with dots above. And so the dot and the prime notation have their benefits and drawbacks. One of the benefits is it's very compact. One of the drawbacks is you can't really explicitly see what the derivative is with respect to. So are those derivatives with respect to t, time, or something else? And that's an advantage of Leibniz's notation, which explicitly tells you what variable you're taking a derivative with respect to. Okay, so let me go through and write some of that down. So going back to the pad here. Uh, so what we have is using, let's say, a more mathematician's notation, we'd have the derivative of f in Newton's notation would be with a dot above it. And the derivative with respect to, uh, well, whatever the independent variable is in uh, Lagrange's notation would be the prime. And then Leibniz's notation would look like this. You have a df dx. And now at this point, we have to make a decision because uh, there's a bunch of different notations in the Leibniz form that differ slightly because of the inclusion of an of x. So let me just add in here the of x, which is the way you'll probably see functions written mostly in the your first year calculus course and is probably familiar from high school. And so I'll do that here just so that I can increase my uh, diversity of ways of writing the notation using Leibniz's notation. So here, when I write the of x, what I'm doing is here I'm taking the derivative of the function to get a new function. And this is kind of like the analogy by analogy with f, right? There's no of x there. And so when I add the of x's, I would put it here in front. So that means we're taking the derivative of the function x to get a new function df dx, and it's a function of x. But you can also write that as you have the function f of x, denoted with these brackets, and then you're taking d dx of that. So you end up with the f of x all in the top of the fraction. And a third way, which is arguably the most 
sort of consistent with the way mathematicians think about derivatives, is to write the ddx out in front and then the f or f of x separately, not in the numerator. And the reason for that last bit is that these here kind of allude to the fact that um, the derivative is like a fraction. It's not exactly a fraction. It's the limit of a fraction. And so the df over dx kind of is a reminder of that in all three cases, um, but more so in these two here. The problem with thinking about it that way, um, so the df is not a number on its own and the dx is not a number that's on its own. These are what's called differentials, but we don't really define these properly until a more advanced course. Uh, physicists will and chemists will often use differentials in their notation without much explanation and they kind of gloss over the fact that df dx is not a ratio of two things um, uh, even though it's sort of technically correct if you go through you know the theory um, but this notation here makes it a little bit more explicit that you have a function and you do something to it to get the derivative okay so those are the most common notations that you will see, and not all of them are equally common. Uh, and so let me go on now with a little bit more about where this matters in the course at this point, particularly the chain rule. So um, we could just write a composition of functions as the function f of g of x. And if we wanted to write down the derivative of this, uh, one notation we could use is Newton's notation, but that would require putting a small dot over an, a very large expression. And that's not entirely clear. Like, does the dot just go over the G or is it the whole thing? So you tend not to see things written like that for a chain rule in Newton's notation. If you put brackets around it, you can put a prime next to it and use Lagrange's notation. And then by the chain rule we know that this can be rewritten as f and now the prime always means whatever your function is take its derivative with respect to its immediate argument in this case the immediate argument is the thing that g of x replaced okay so i'll, I'll just point out that this prime here is a little bit ambiguous because you know it's just by tradition we know that when you have a prime outside a bracket like that you're taking the derivative with respect to the innermost variable but it's still not a great notation because there's a bit of ambiguity there so i'll show you a better replacement for that in a second so here then the f prime is a derivative with respect to its argument whatever goes in the bracket and then we happen to have g of x in the bracket and the chain rule tells us that we should take the derivative of that and multiply it to get the overall derivative of the composition. Okay, so what I would prefer to do here is I would prefer to define a new function h of x and then define that as the composition so that now when I write down h prime of x it's very clear that I'm taking the derivative of h with respect to its argument, the thing immediately in the brackets, not the nested one hiding inside. And so that tells us that we do a chain rule because it's a composition, and we get f prime of x, just like before, times g prime of x. Sorry, f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Okay, so that is the way I would prefer to see it written. Um, okay, so now what about in um, Leibniz's notation? So now let me just rewrite h of x up here and we can write the derivative of h in Leibniz's notation. So in Leibniz's notation, we would say the derivative with respect to x of h of x is equal to, now this says that I'm taking the derivative of this function with respect to its argument just like a prime, but now I want to explicitly write this f prime and this g prime um, in, a, in a clear, unambiguous way. And what I mean by that is you'll notice back here that when I do, when I write a prime here, a prime indicates that I'm taking a derivative with respect to the argument in the brackets, the outermost one. And it doesn't specify what the letter denoting it is. So this prime here is a derivative of this thing, 
with sorry with respect to this thing this g of x and the g prime is a derivative with respect to x so this prime here is really a derivative with respect to you know whatever goes here so if you originally wrote down f as f of x then this would be f derivative with respect to that x but it's a little bit safer to think of this as f the derivative of f of g which then will become g of x when you plug in that g of x in the chain rule. So here I'm going to explicitly make that clear. I'm going to say that the first derivative is the derivative of x with respect to and call its argument g. And then that's evaluated at g of x because that's what we put into the brackets. And then we have to multiply that by the derivative of g. And here it's unambiguous to say that it's the derivative of g with respect to x evaluated at x. So this gives us a clear, unambiguous notation for the derivative of a composition of functions. And now the last thing I want to say is something that I don't want to, I don't like to see. I, I, I think it's a poorly defined way of thinking about things. And that is, you might be tempted if you were thinking about this as a fraction, and this is a fraction, to say, oh, I have a dg in the denominator and a dg in the numerator, so what I'm left with is df dx. And now, if we had left our function as this sort of unnamed composition, it's tempting to think about it that way, but the problem with that is if we claim that this is equal to df dx, this is not really a very clearly defined thing, because we can think of having written, you know, f of x is equal to x squared, and then g of x is equal to the sine of x, and then the composition f of g of x is uh, sine of x all squared. And then when I say d f dx, am I referring to the derivative of this function or the derivative of this function? And really, I should be referring to the derivative of this function. But it's ambiguous because, well, I wouldn't even say it's ambiguous. I would say it's clearly not this one. It's actually this one that you're referring to in this notation. So thinking of canceling this dg over dg, it's a way to check that you got the formula right. But it's not really a very good rigorous way to write this down. So I'm going to put a big x through this equal sign and um, encourage you not to think about it in those terms. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to say about function and derivative notation and its implications for how to write the chain rule out.